Evo ćemo da počnemo. Izgleda smo, izgleda pošto nam je ljeto i pošto smo, pošto smo u manjem broju, ovaj, uvijek, uvijek nam izgleda kao u velikom prostoru da nas i jako malo, ali kad je lekcija dobra, ovaj, stvarno treba uživati u tome. Ja sam ovu lekciju čuo već prije godinu dana u Bosni. I ove godine smo tražili da, da ponovimo ovu lekciju u Bosni. Profesor Mike Pierce je čovjek koji je u osnovi istoričar, ali puno tema kojima se bavi su jako zanimljive teme, jako zanimljive oblasti. Jedno od njih je obrazovanje. Posebno zanimljivo zato što možda u našim zemljama često razmišljamo da je obrazovanje na zapadu puno bolje nego obrazovanje na istoku. I zato danas ova lekcija upravo koja poredi obrazovanje na zapadu i na istoku može, može pomoći i kad vi govorite nekim drugim ljudima o tome šta obrazovati se na zapadu znači i šta obrazovati se ovdje znači. Tako da, evo, ja mogu predstaviti profesora Pirsa kao čovjeka koji ima bogato iskustvo predavanja, predavao je u Engleskoj, u, predavao je u Americi, predaje u Americi, u New Yorku, u Engleskoj predavao u Londonu. Napisao je a, dosta knjiga, najpoznatija njegova knjiga do sada, a, Zašto ostatak svijeta mrzi zapad, je čak predstavljena i pred američkim predsjednikom i tako dalje. On inače završio Oxford, doktorirao je na Oxfordu i a, ja znam da puno njegovih razmišljanja mogu da utječu na vas na način da vas isprovociraju da razmišljate drugčije o nečem. Evo, ja kad smo započeli projekat VEB, započeli smo ga sa ciljem da promoviramo slobodno obrazovanje. I znate šta je zanimljivo? Činjenica da kad imamo dobre predavače i kad u jednom gradu poput Subotice na jedno besplatno predavanje ne možemo dobiti recimo 70-80 ljudi koji dođu da to slušaju, znači da u našim krajevima, bilo da je to Hrvatska, bilo da je to Bosna i bilo da je to Srbija, još uvijek jako puno nam nedostaje da, da kažemo ljudima obrazovati se nije nešto što si završio jednom u životu, nego učiti je nešto što traje dok si živ. I nažalost, u našim krajevima ljudi često često ne cijene mogućnost da dobiju nešto novo, da čuju nešto novo i upravo zato možemo reći da naš projekat VEJB ima i tekako još puno posla. U stvari kad bi, kad bi mi vidjeli ovdje veliku salu i puno ljudi značilo da smo već uspjeli, da smo već završili, da je već to to. I naravno evo i ove godine VEJB će imati u oktobru onaj svoj dvosedmični dvosedmični kurs engleskog na koji dođe oko 150 ljudi i na, koji, ovaj, a, na kojem stvari ponovo ožive i krenu. Međutim, to nas, i nama koji smo u timu pokazuje koliko trebamo, da, koliko trebamo truda da uložimo da ljudima koji dolaze na, na kurs pokažemo koliko je bitno da to učenje jezika, ne bude samo učenje jezika, nego da bude učenje svega drugoga što, što, što se može ponuditi, svega drugoga što imamo. U svakom slučaju, a, ja sam sretan da barem ljeti Mike može da dođe ovdje kod nas u Europu. Evo mi smo ga napravili, mi smo ga proveli na jednu turneju koja je krenula od Hrvatske kroz Bosnu i sad smo došli u Srbije. Evo ovoga, ja sam sretan da predstavim svog prijatelja, profesora Majka Pirsa i predavanje obrazovanje na istoku i zapadu. Teja naša direktorica će ga prevoditi, tako da ovaj, evo ja se nadam da ćete uživiti. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon or good evening everybody. I'm really excited to be here with you. Um, Angelica was mentioning my uh, my best known book a few moments ago. Um, but one difference between Westerners and pretty much everybody else ali jedna razlika između zapadnjaka i gotovo svih nas ostalih. Uh, doesn't get talked about at all in my book. Uh, tu stvar uopće ne spominjem u mojoj knjizi. But it's one that all of you will have encountered in some respect or another. Ali svi biste se suočili sa tom stvari na jedan ili na drugi način. If people who 
don't come from some of the rich Western countries say what they think about people who do. Uh, ako ljudi koji ne dolaze iz zapadnih iz zapadnih zemalja kažu što misle onima koji dolaze iz zapada. And they then think about the Westerners they have met. I razmišljaju o onim zapadnjacima koji su susreli u životu. One factor comes up again and again and again all around the world. Uh, jedna stvar se stalno i stalno i stalno ponavlja u čitavom svijetu. The Westerners are very good at their special subjects, the thing they know about. Zapadnjaci su jako dobri u onim stvarima, predmetima u kojima su specializirani. If they are computer people or some other kind of technician or engineer. Ako su informatičari ili nekakvi tehničari, inženjeri. Some kind of manager or accountant. Ako su računovođe, neki vrste menadžera. But they know nothing at all about the world that they live in. Super su tim stvarima u kojima su specializirali, ali nemaju pojma o svijetu u kojem žive. Now, clearly non-Westerners are right in making this judgment. Naravno, oni koji nisu sa zapada imaju pravo što imaju takve mišljenje o njima koji su sa zapada. They can all see it. Svima je to jasno i očito. And if we look closely at the products of Western education systems, i ako pogledamo u krajnji proizvod edukacijskog sustava sa zapada, ne možemo ništa drugo nego usprediti to kao činjenicu. One of the main jobs that I have in the position I'm now employed in in America. Jedan od osnovnih poslova koji sam imao na ovom poslu u kojem sad trenutno radim u Americi. Is leading a program called East Meets West. Je vođenje programa koji se zove Istok susreće zapad. Now it is what we call an honors program. Uh, oni to zovu program za najbolje studente. <laughs> oni su naši najinteligentni studenti. <laughs> za isto. <laughs> Morate vidjeti ostali piju. <laughs> <laughs> the, the idea is to encourage intelligent students to come to our college. Ono što je ideja ovog programa da privuće najinteligentnije studente na njihov fakultet gdje on predaje. And when they arrive, I need to do all kinds of things to them. During the very intensive one semester course that they have with me. We need not only to teach them about the uh, cultures that are part of the academic content of the program. Mi ne samo da ih učimo o kulturama i to je dio akademijskog programa koje oni podučavaju. They also need to understand that almost everything they have learned up to this point in school is rubbish. Oni moraju naučiti još jednu stvar jako važno, to je sve ono što su do sad učili u školi, od ovaj to što je koji su došli na fakultet, je zapravo izveze. They need to change their, well what the Germans would call Einstellung, their whole way of thinking. Oni trebaju promijeniti skroz svoj način promišljenja. And I will say more about that in a moment. I više ću govoriti o tome za koji trenutak. But if I have a problem with the students, who are actually very good, very nice kids mostly. I ako imam ponekad možda neki problem sa studentima, mojim studentima koji su zaista jako dobra djeca. I have found that at the end of the semester, when we bring them to the Balkans. Služio sam na kraju semesta kada ih dovedemo na Balkan. Uh, for a three-week tour, looking at some of the things they have studied. I also have a problem with some of the colleagues and lecturers uh, from this region who will speak to my students. Because their habit with speaking to visiting Westerners, perhaps especially to Americans. Is to do two things to them that are very understandable but wrong. On the one hand, they always talk down to them as if they know absolutely nothing. Now, uh, that is very understandable with most Western visitors, but my students... 
I to je jako razumljivo sa gotovo svim zapadnjacima koji dolaze ovdje nešto da nauče, ali moji studenti. After I have been mistreating them for a whole semester. <laughs> Nakon što sam se uh, ja loše ponašao prema njima gotovo čitav semestar. They do know something. Oni na, uh, stvarno nauče nešto. So it is rather annoying if I take them to a lecture in say Bosnia. And the lecturer begins, well, this is Bosnia. <laughs> it, is in the it is in the Balkans. There was a war here in the 1990s. And we have Muslims and Orthodox and Catholics. Thank you, thank you. They, they know this, they know this. But the other mistake that they make ali druga pogrešna koju oni rade je is to flatter them for nothing. Ja da im oni laskaju za ništa. Now this is understandable. Nema na čemu im laskati. I ovo razumijem također. Because we need them, don't we? We need their money. Zato što ih trebamo, trebamo njihov novac. We need their influence and the contacts they can give us. A trebamo njihov utjecaj i kontakte koje oni imaju. And I have to say to the people who are about to teach my students, don't flatter and don't think they know nothing. They know quite a bit. I have brought them from nothing to here. I want you to take them to here, not to start all over again. As I explain sometimes to students and to their parents, i kao što sam nekad mojim studentima i njihovim roditeljima objasnio I have to be nasty to two separate groups of people in two different ways Ja moram uh, biti zločest prema dvije različite uh, skupine ljudi i na dva različita načina So there's an intercultural event can happen Tako da se <laughs> međukulturalni uh, događaj može dogoditi uh, Ja sam uh, zapadnjak Školovanio sam se u Velikoj Britaniji, gimnazije u Južnom Londonu, Univerziteti u Walesu i postdiplomski studij, magisteri i doktorat u Oxfordu. I moram da kažem da te metale malo pomoće sa gramatikom. So, <laughs> so uh, I have to understand, you have to understand, I am a Westerner. It was in Britain that I did my first teaching. I taught business studies in a Jewish school, that's a funny story. It's almost like a little Yiddish joke in itself. <laughs> I taught history and economics in a private boarding school in England. And then taught church history in a theological college in London for 10 years. Now, although I had very briefly visited what was then Yugoslavia, for just three or four days in 1975, my first real experience of this region was in March 1995 when I went to teach at a college in Osijek. And I had been going back there to teach just for a week or two every year. Nearly every year since then. And I like to say that most of the really important things that I now know are now no, I learned by coming to the Balkans. I ono što uh, moram priznati je da većina onih važnih stvari u životu koje sam naučio, sam naučio s ovim dolaz, dolazima na Balkan. But perhaps I would not have been in a position to, to learn what I did even then if I had not had my particular kind of background in history. Ali vjerojatno ne bi ni ove stvari koje sam naučio mogao naučiti da nisam ranije učio povijest. 
The students I met in Osijek were from Croatia and Serbia and Bosnia and Bulgaria. Studenti koji sam sreo u Hrvatskoj su bili iz Hrvatske, Bosne, Srbije, Bugarske. And Macedonia and Romania and Belarus and Ukraine. Iz Makedonije, Belarusije, Ukrajine. And they were so different to the students I was used to teaching back in London. I oni su bili toliko drugačiji od studenta koje sam ja podučavao u Londonu. My real education was just listening to them talk about ordinary things. I moje pravo obrazovanje je bilo kada sam slušao kako ti studenti sa Balkana govore o običnim stvarima. In the first place, they treated and spoke to me completely differently to the way my students back in London did. Ono što je jako zanimljivo, meni su ovi studenti totalno drugačiji način prilazili i razgovarali s namom nego oni studenti u Londonu. Their attitude towards their other professors and towards the college authorities was completely different. Njihov stav prema drugim profesorima i autoritetima na fakultetu je bio totalno drugačiji od studenta na zapadu. Their attitude towards their families and the places they came from njihove stave prema obitelji, mjestu iz kojeg su dolazili, towards political authorities, prema političkim vlastima, and in their relationships with one another, all of this was different. I njihove međusudni odnos, sve je ovo bilo totalno drugačije. Now I could say so much about this, o tome bi mogu govoriti jako puno. Because after a little I thought to myself, where have I learned, where have I heard people speaking this way before? I naravno o tome bi mogo puno pričati i nekako sam razmišljao pa gdje sam ja čuo ovo ranije. I nakon nekog vremena sam skužio. U 17. stoljeću u Engleskom. Ovo je bilo revolucionarno moment u kojem sam otkrio nešto. And I began to understand something about the difference between traditional societies and modern Western societies. My book, Why the Rest Takes the West, is one of the results of that change, that understanding. But I want to talk in particular about the difference today between traditional kinds of education, as we find in, let us say, the East for silly shorthand. And what we find in the modern West. Now I want to say in advance that there are two big problems that you will know about your educational system here. Which I cannot touch upon. I have no idea how to resolve these problems. You know about them better than I do. And they don't affect the main topic that I'm talking about today. I ta dva velika problema ne utječu na ovu temu koju govorimo danas. What are these two very serious problems that I cannot talk about today? Dakle, od dva ova velika problema ne mogu govoriti danas. One is a problem common to all of the post-communist countries. Prvi je problem jednak svim post-komunističkim zemljama. And that is an economic one. A to je ekonomski problem. The communist or the socialist economy was a false economy. A komunistička ili socialistička ekonomija je bila lažna ekonomija. But under it, ali ispod nje, all kinds of resources went to education. Razne vrste resursa su odlazili u obrazovanje. And when that economy, when that system came to an end, a kada je taj sustav se raspao, the education systems had all of the money and the resources taken away from them. U jednom trenu čitav edukacijski sustav je izgubio sav novac. Today, schools in almost all the post-communist countries are terribly badly equipped. Danas škole koje su inače iz post-komunističkog doba su jako slabo opremljene. And teachers relatively badly paid. A predavači, učitelji, profesori su relativno loše plaće. In some countries you can earn more by working in McDonald's than you can by being a school teacher. U nekim zemljama možete zaraditi više ako radite u McDonald's nego ako ste učitelji. 
This came home to me personally, very forcefully, in 2003. I, I had a sabbatical term, free. And I was spending it in Skopje. Uh, ja sam to u Skopju. And I was supposed to be, I was, uh, writing a uh, church history book. I trebao sam i zaista jesam uh, u tom periodu pisao jednu knjigu iz crkvene povijesti. One lady who worked in the Cyril of Methodius University was very kind to me. Uh, jedna uh, gospođa koja je radila na univerzitetu uh, činila je metoda tamo uh, je bila jako fina prema meni. She said I, I have got permission for you to use the library of the history faculty in the university. Mi je rekla imam dozvolu da uh, da možete koristiti našu univerzitetsku knjižicu. So I went along to the library one day. Tako da sam otišao u šetnju i otišao sam u tu knjižicu jedan dan. And I had a terrible shock. I tamo sam se užasno iznenadio. For the history faculty library, they had maybe 2 or 300 books. That was all. Za univerzitetsku biblioteku imali su samo 200 do 300 knjiga i to je bilo sve. They were all old is this good. Is for is it that? They they So please no. Ja sam se da se da teško mi se prebaci na. Um they, they were all very old. Uh sve te knjige su bile jako stare. Almost all of them had been written under communism. Uh, gotove, sve te knjige su bile napisane tijekom komunizma. The whole Marxist way of talking about everything was completely worthless. Uh, način koje su bile pisane su promovirale marxizam i nisu imali nikakvu vrijednost. I would not have paid anybody even 50 pounds for the whole lot. Ja nikom ne bi platio čak ni 50 funti za čitavu tu uh, knjižnicu. I didn't mind that, that this kindness of this lady was not able to help me. That wasn't a problem. Uh, naravno, nije bi bilo uh, krivo zato što ova žena je bila zaista ljubazna i htjela mi je pomoći, to nije problem. Just so sad for the history students in that university. Ja sam ja sam bio toliko tužan za te studente istorije na tom univerzitetu. What will their degrees be worth? Koliko će vrijediti njihove diplome kad završe? All they have to go on is this rubbish. Sve ono što oni iz čega mogu učiti je ovo smeće. Plus whatever they get from what their professors tell them in the lectures. And that's it. Plus ono što je njihov profesor kaže na predavanju. I to je sve. Very sad. Ja. The second problem, of course, is corruption. Drugi problem je naravno korupcija. School authorities and university authorities show favoritism to this person over that person. Vlasti u školama i na fakultetima pokazuju pokazuju da više favoritiziraju jednu osobu nasuprot neke druge osobe. For a whole lot of reasons. Iz puno različitih razloga. And in very many places, of course, you will need to pay before you can pass an exam. I u puno mjesta morat ćete platiti da biste mogli proći ispit. Now. I do not have a solution to these problems in my pocket. You know about them much better than I do. What I'm wanting to do today is to ignore these huge problems. I want to talk strictly about the comparison of educational methodology. I želim da danas uh, uspoređujemo jednostavno edukacijske modele. And uh, if I want to look, uh, compare the traditional model of education with what is current in the modern West. Znači ono što želim usporediti je tradicionalni model sa onim uh, što je sada trenutan model na zapadu. Now traditional types of education are we can say fact driven. Uh, u tradicionalnom obrazovnom sustavu uh, važne su činjenice. Here are a load of facts, students. Go away and learn them. Ovdje je puno uh, činjenica, studenti. Idite doma i učite ih. And tomorrow we will come back and you will have a test. A sutra ćete se vratiti i imat ćete test. And you will repeat to me what I have told you today. I vi ćete ponoviti ono što sam ja rekao danas. It is deferential. Uh, isto je sustav koji pokazuje uh, u kojem se studenti moraju uvizivati. Students defer to the professor, the professor knows. Uh, studenti uh, do ekstrema poštuju uh, profesore. Um, this became 
very clear to me as soon as I arrived in Osijek. To mi je postalo jako jasno čim sam stigao u Osijek. All of the students addressed me constantly as professor. Uh, admittedly, the college I was in, in London, was extremely informal. Uh, and the students would address me by my first name. Well, actually one time I had a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. There was a a very shy but very nice Austrian girl who came to study with us. And with the German students I like to practice my German. But she would never do this with me. I would speak to her in German and she would always reply in English. I couldn't understand why she did this. Then one day I realized I started to laugh. And said, you can manage to address me as Mike. But if you speak to me in German, you must choose between Z and Du and both will seem ridiculous, won't they? <laughs> Okay. So, uh, uh, but the, certainly the students were very deferential. Traditional education tends to be non-innovative. Never mind your ideas, never mind about thinking about change, learn this. And reproduce it. In that sense, it is non-critical. We do not invite the students to criticize either what the professor says or any particular idea. Now, I sound as if I'm saying many bad things about the traditional model. But actually, I think there are very many good things about it, which are in danger of being lost. One of the things that seems to me now to be sad, but also alarming, is that the countries of Central and Eastern Europe are rushing to copy the West in everything. They are rich, we are not so rich, they must know what to do. Let us be like that. We feel a little bit of inferiority, so we want to be the same as them. And I'm wanting to suggest to you that this is a bad idea. That we need to be much more discerning about what we take from the West. You noticed there that I was slipping into we. <laughs> you starting to realize which culture I am identifying with these days. <laughs> Tradition, traditional education is good for maintaining a culture and its ideas, for keeping it and passing it down to the future. It is also good at producing an informed person, a person who knows rather a lot of real things. It is not good for creativity, change and dynamism. Uh, nije dobro za kreativnost, promjenu i dinamiku. 
The person coming out of it will not necessarily be looking for new opportunities either for themselves or for their company. It is typically not good at analyzing the situations or for making sensible comparisons between one culture and another, one situation and another. Let us now move from that traditional model to think about the modern Western model. Ajmo se pomaknuti od ovog tradicionalnog modela i otići malo pogledati zapadni. And I want to start by... Sorry. No, 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 no. Just leave it where it was on the traditional education one. Treći slide. No, no, drugi. 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 Huh? You've created a new slide now. I want to begin by starting with uh, telling you a little story, a true story. Uh, I used to lead a theology degree program in a, in a college in London, quite a well-known one. For about 10 years. Now, um, the stu uh, potential students then used to give their applications to us and we used to look at them and interview them and say, do we want to take this student? One young lady came to us, she was 18 years old and in the final year of her secondary school she had an excellent academic record. And the predictions that had been made for her for the exams she would take in a few months, the public exams were A, A, A. Many other things about her seem to be very good and promising. But one little thing that our college did to potential students was to give them a little test of our own. About the students' knowledge of the Bible. Now you wouldn't do this anywhere else. But it was a theological college. We wouldn't keep anybody out if they did very badly in the test. But my colleagues and I just wanted to be warned in advance. <coughs> just how much ignorance we were going to be required to deal with. <laughs> and this lady had young lady had done very badly in that test. So I was interviewing her and the interview was going very nicely. And then I asked her the awkward question. And I was I teased her. I said, you didn't do very well in this test. Don't they, um, don't they teach the Bible in your church? Now this was very bad of me, but you must realize I'm an evil man. Because I knew that her parents were the pastors of that church. <laughs> and her reply was very revealing. She said, oh, oh, they do teach it. 
It's just that the emphasis is upon applying. So I said to her, how can you apply it if you don't know it? Now, in that sentence is the entire Western educational wasteland that we have at the moment. U ovoj rečenici se nalazi čitav edukacijski kaos kojeg imamo na zapadu. Never mind that this was a theological college. Bez obzira što je bio to teološki fakultet. It affects every student in every discipline. Utječe na sve studente u svakoj disciplini. As I, was, as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, your experience of Westerners will have been of people who are very good at their specialized um, task, but know nothing about the wider world. And there is a reason for that, and it lies in the Western educational methodology. That same summer that I spent in Macedonia, uh, I was in a cafe where a number of young Macedonian guys were discussing the possibility of westernizing the Mes Macedonian educational system. And one of them turned to me and said, what do you think about this? Now I'm both I'm a little, sneakily a little bit proud, but mostly I'm ashamed of what happened next. I said to them, think of all the Brits and Americans that you have met who come to work here. If you want your children and grandchildren to be that ignorant. Then your course of action is plain. You must westernize the Macedonian system. And the conversation came to an end. It just stopped. They had all known this for years. But because it was one of those Westerners who had said it, it was like giving them permission to clarify the, the thought in their own minds. Now, when I give this talk in, in Tuzla, many of the people there want to go and study in the West at and perhaps to make a new life for themselves. Something like this might be true of some of you or your children or grandchildren. Now the economic reasons are obvious. It is much richer, you can have a more comfortable life. What is the appeal of studying there? Will you know this really? It is more pleasant to have your ego flattered. You, you will not have to work so hard. And when you get there and you know this, you will be considered a genius. Why? Because you know so much more than your Western peers. And why is that? Because you had your basic schooling here first. Let's have a look at the picture. 
Hvala da imam snim. This man, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Ovaj čovjek, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, has had an enormous influence upon the way every child is taught in Western countries. Ovaj čovjek je imao ogroman utjecaj na to kako se danas na zapadu obrazuju djeca. He was one of the leading thinkers of the Enlightenment. On je bio jedan od vodećih mislioca prosvjetiteljstva. Although in some ways he was reacting against it. Iako na neki način on je reagirao protiv prosvjetiteljstva. He's one of the most important thinkers in the movement we call Romanticism. I jedan od važnijih pokretača pokreta koji zove Romanticizam. Romanticism of all kinds. Sve vrste Romanticizam. Romanticism in art and painting. Umjetnosti, zvigarstvu. Romanticism in literature. U knježevnosti. And particularly as it affects our purposes, romanticization of the self. A za nas danas isto tako i na romanticizaciju samih sebe. His influence upon figures of high culture during the 50, 60, 70 years or so after his death was enormous. But it didn't stop there. It has continued to flow down to our own day but a more and more popular level. It affects, for example, almost every Hollywood movie you have ever seen. Particularly with its pathetic little moral at the end. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. <laughs> As I say in my book, Why the Rest Takes the West, don't believe in yourself. A Christian view of the world tells you you are sinful. Believe in something, or maybe better, someone worthwhile instead. I'm a Christian, I think that's someone worthwhile is Jesus, but I didn't come here to preach so let's come back from that and back to this topic. Uh, certainly he is the key figure in the romanticization of the self that dominates Western popular culture today. And particularly with a form of education whose key phrase is that it must be child-centered. Let's think about that phrase child-centered in the passage we will look at next. Never show a child what he cannot see, says Rousseau. Talk to him of what he knows he can use now. In other words, don't give him any abstract information, only what he can apply right away. As our little girl said, the emphasis is on applying. Let there be no comparison with other children. No rivalry. No competition. Not even in running races. Why? Because we might hurt the poor child's feelings. They are brought up to be the center of their little world. Well, I, I have to tell you that in several things, and certainly in running races, I was the worst in my class. And you can see that I've been psychologically crippled for life by this. I go away and cry into my pillow every night. I would far rather, says Rousseau, 
Ja bih radije, kaže Ruso, but he did not learn anything than have him learn it through jealousy or self-conceit. One of the central purposes of modern Western education is the self-esteem of the student. But self-esteem is, is a funny quality, rather like humility, actually. The more you think about it, the more you don't have it. If you think you are humble, again, with the exception of Jesus, you are not. The path to self-esteem is to forget about yourself and put yourself into the service of other people. It's a strange thing about um, I hate books, they only teach us to talk about things we know nothing about. Very strange for a man who wrote rather a lot of books. His most important book is a novel actually called Emil. Which was about the, uh, uh, the education of a young boy brought up in the way that Rousseau imagined was the ideal education. The child was taught nothing. Uh, ništa, but he was helped by his teacher to discover things for himself. And again, this has become since the dominant idea in Western schoolrooms. Uh, you know, it's a very strange thing when, ja, we th stvar, when we think about how Rousseau dealt with his own children. He never married, but he lived with an illiterate serving girl for all of his life. And he kept her. This great intellectual kept her illiterate. They had, I forget, it's either 10, 11 or 12 children. And all of them, immediately after the birth, were given away to what in the 18th century was called a foundlings hospital. This was um, a, a place where babies that had been abandoned by their mothers, perhaps because they were illegitimate, were taken. And of course, uh, because there was no milk to give them, and they couldn't easily be fed other than by breastfeeding, nearly all of them died within a few days of being given to the hospital. This is the man who tells us how to raise our children. The second great influence upon Western education is this man, John Dewey. He was an American socialist and atheist. And he amplified many of Rousseau's ideas. Particularly the idea that you should not teach children abstract information. But, the only, but only those things that they can immediately apply and relate to their own experience. Can you see where this is going? Can you see how it produces the kinds of Westerners that you have met? 
Da li vidite što je dovolj do toga da vi upoznajete zapadnjaki kako je upoznajete danas? The problem with child-centered education Problem sa edukacijom koja je centrirana na djete is that it works. je da funkcionira. It produces child-centered children proizvodi djecu koja su fokusirana sama na sebe. It produces student-centered students. Producira studente koji su fokusirani na sami sebe. It is my job to be student-centered. Moj je posao da bude fokusiran na studenta. But student-centered is the very last thing I want my students to be. Ali posljednja stvar koju želim za moje studente da budu fokusirani sami na sebe. It is the very last thing I want the education I give them to be. To je posljednja stvar koju želim za obrazovanje koje želim dati njima. But can you see that children and students who have been brought up this way Ali možete li vidjeti da djeca i studenti koji su bili odvojeni na ovaj način pay no attention to anything that is outside of their immediate experience. So if I live in France or America, why would I pay attention to how anybody else in the world lives or thinks? I don't want to go there. If I go on holiday, I will go somewhere else very pleasant and sunny, perhaps in the Caribbean. Australia or somewhere like that. Why would I want to go somewhere poor and where people are still very traditional, think in a traditional way? Can you see that a real education Možete li vidjeti da pravo obrazovanje instead of working on a student's self-esteem umjesto da radi na samopoštovanju studenta needs to try to create not extreme but moderate dissatisfaction with the self. Umjesto toga treba stvoriti ne ekstremno, ali donekle je potrebno nezadovoljstvo samim sobom. So that we want to learn more, we want to improve, we want to get somewhere. Tako da se želimo popraviti, želimo biti bolji, želimo stići negdje. Ok, let's have a look at Western, Western education. Western education then seeks to shape attitudes, not to teach uh, content in any ordinary sense. Znači, zapadno uh, uh, obrazovanje želi oblikovati stavove, a ne podučavati ni na bilo koji obič, običajen način. Now what I say next here is a little bit of an exaggeration. I am throwing stones. But the direction of what I'm describing is, is right. Students of geography have no idea where Ecuador is. Instead, they learn how evil multinational companies are. Umjesto toga oni uče koliko su zle multinacionalne kompanije. Students of literature know little of Shakespeare. Studenti knježevnosti znaju malo o Shakespeareu. Or even how to write decently in their own language. Ili čak nemaju pojma kako da do kraja ispravno pišu na vlastitom jeziku. Instead they deconstruct novels politically. Umjesto toga dekonstruiraju novele this is not an exaggeration. I had a conversation with my niece, who is a delightful girl of 17. Just two weeks ago. And I asked her what she would be studying for her A-levels. These are the things that you do in the last couple of years in school in Britain. And she, was, she was describing this to me. And, and one of the modules was even called a, a deconstructing a, a particular set of novels. I raised an eyebrow. Said, you don't know the novels themselves yet. 
Ja sam rekao, pa ti još nisi ni pročitala te novele. But the teachers are rushing to give you their philosophical or ethical or political opinion about them, are they? A tvoje učitelji ti već trče da bi ti dali njihovo filozofsko ili političko uvjerenje o tim knjižanim dijelima. Students of history know little of the Habsburg and Ottoman empires. Studenti istorije znaju malo o Habsburgskom i Ottomanskim carstvima. In other words, of real facts. Drugim rečima, malo znaju o pravim činjenicama. Instead, they learn that the human past was a long struggle. Umjesto toga uče da je ljudska povijest bila duga, dugoročna borba. Against racism, sexism, homophobia, and of course against religion. Tako da je ljudska povijest bila dugačka borba protiv rasizma, seksizma, homofobije i naravno religije. Now, not all Western education goes this far, but that is its general direction. Naravno, svo zapadno obrazovanje ne ide oboliko daleko, ali ovo je opći smijer kretanja. In the college where I teach, students in their final year na fakultetu gdje ja podučavam, studenti u završnoj godini produce what you in, in this system would call a diplomski. Uh, Moraju napisati nešto što u našem sustavu se zove diplomski rad. And you will not be surprised to hear that one of the favorite topics i nećete biti iznenađeni jedna od omiljenih tema za diplomski rad. Especially of weaker students posebno za slabije studente is a favorite topic of history syllabuses in the West as a whole. Uh, history in, of It's, a, it's also a, the same as a, a, as a favorite topic of history syllabuses in the West as a whole. It is uh, the Holocaust. This girl really knew nothing properly about the Second World War. Ova djevka nije znala o tome ništa uh, ono što bi trebala znati o drugom svjetskom ratu. Uh, she was looking into the life of uh, Elie Wiesel. Uh, gledala je u, uh, promatala je i čitala životu Elie Wiesel. Who, of course, she insisted on mispronouncing in the usual American barbarous fashion. Še ime je na krivi način, nije čak znala da nisam ne zgovorim njena ime. I tried to help her by showing her where Romania was. Ja sam je pokušala pomoći tako što sam je pokazala gdje je Rumunska and how it was included within Hungary during World War II, rather like this region. And about the complicated national politics and the dynamics of anti-Semitism. But the result of Diplomski was very, very, very weak anyway. Ali rezultati na diplomskom su bili jako, jako slavni. What she wanted was the simplistic moral story. Ono što ona htjela je jednostavna moralna priča. Because in a society which can no longer agree upon any kind of morality. Jer u društvu u kojem oni žive, u kojem se nikto ne može složiti oko moralnih stavova. We can at least still agree on the rather obvious point that it's wrong to kill millions of people simply because of their ethnic background or religion. Ono oko čega se mogu i u takvom društvu svi složiti je da je pogrešno ubiti milijone ljudi samo radi etničkog, njihove etničke pripadnosti. My point is that there was no attempt at serious interaction with the complexities of other societies, other ways of thinking. Ono što želim reći, nije uopće ni pokušala da shvati drugačiji set razmišljanja u drugačijem kontekstu. But this is actually the typical results of Western education methodology. Perhaps the saddest thing is that it kills curiosity. That if a person is not curious about the world, there is almost no point in them going to school or college or anything. Ako osoba nije znatiželjno svijeta oko njega ili nje, nema smisla ići ili u školu ili na kulte. And this system is like an inoculation, an injection against curiosity. A ovaj sustav je poput inekcije protiv znatiželje. If I had to choose which kinds of students to teach, kad bi ja imao izbor koju vrstu studenta da podučavam, the products of a traditional methodology in school 
or the products of the modern Western one. Da li da uzmem uh, studente koji su produkt uh, tradicionalnog obrazovnog sustava ili modernog zapadnjačkog? I would not be happy, but I would definitely choose the first. Ne bih bio sretan, ali bih definitivno odabrao prvi izbor. I like to put it this way. Now, what I'm going to say is a caricature, but, okay. Uh, da, ovo ću, što ću sada reći će biti na neki način karikatura, ali... The product of the traditional educational mythology, uh, methodology knows everything and understands nothing. They have a head full of facts. And this is good. But they don't really understand it. And, and insofar as they do have an understanding, uh, and insofar as they do have some kind of understanding, uh, it is simply the one point of view that their professors gave them. Uh, the professors, of course, are right. So, uh, if you have been brought up under communism or some other political viewpoint, tako da ako ste odrasli, odrasli u komunizmu ili nekoj uh, drugoj političkom pogledu or some kind of crazy nationalism ili nekako ludom nacionalizmu or one particular religious point of view ili na jednu uh, određenu uh, religijski pogled you, od, odgoja you will think that no other viewpoints are possible or sensible or even moral bit ćete onda smatrati da ni jedan drugi pogled uh, na odgoj nije ni moralan, ni ispravan, ni razuman. And this is a big disadvantage. I to je velika, uh, veliki nedostatak za ovaj sustav. The typical product of the Western system ali uh, tipičan produkt zapadnjaškog sustava knows nothing and is perfectly content with themselves. Ne znaju ništa, a savršeno su zadovoljni sami sobom. Now, in the American version, this is particularly extreme. Uh, but Americans are much more polite than other Westerners. And so if you tell them something, they will politely pretend to be curious. But you know that they immediately rush to forget it again straight away afterwards. <laughs> All Westerners have been taught to express themselves. Although and this is particularly true of English speakers, both in Britain, America, Australia. Because most of them cannot even write a correct sentence in their own language. Then expressing a viewpoint that is worth having is rather difficult. Tako da, ako to ne znaju, onda je puno teže vlastito mišljenje izreći. As I said, I would rather have the product of the first system. Kao što sam rekao, radi bih imao proizvod prvog sustava. Because after I have worked with them, uh, jer nakon što sam radio sa njima, and been rude to them, and done all kinds of things to them, <laughs> i nakon što sam rekao svašta nešto ružno, then they will be in a position to do some analysis, some criticism. Oni će sa svim ovim informacijama koji uh, oni imaju nakon što sam radio sa njima moći uh, raditi sa informacijama koje su dobili. Making sensible comparisons between one culture or one situation and another. Moći će razume usporedbe s jednom kulturom ili situacijom. But the 18 year old who is not curious it is very difficult to do anything with. Ali u samestogodišnjak koji nije znati željan we notice too that the Western methodology is profoundly disempowering. Now this applies to almost all disciplines, all subjects. But I want to give you a very simple example. Uh, let us suppose that we are learning Spanish. Uh, ajmo zamisliti da učimo španjolski. 
we can tell our student to use the phrase I would like a Coca-Cola, please. But we don't want to burden the poor dear Ali mi na zapadu ne želimo uznemiriti jadno dijete with grammar. sa gramatikom. So we just give them examples and hope that somehow they pick it up. Tako ćemo im dati samo neki primjeri i nadati se da će nekako uh, skužiti gramatiku. We don't want to go through I want, you want, he, she, it wants, we want, you plural want, they want. A ne želimo proći kroz uh, jedinu i možinu ja želim, ti želiš, on želi, mi želimo, vi želimo, ne oni želi. So we just give them examples. And so they continue to be the slave of the, the phrases they have learned because they never understand the structure. Because the modern Western system is shy about facts and principles. The student is cheated. And constantly feels uh, as if any new field of knowledge is strange, foreign to them. Whereas the traditional system is brave with the student. It says, here are some things you need to know, go away and learn them. When you have this, you can do some more. And the result of that is actually empowering. You know, it's a content-driven education. Actually gets us further. Something that is always looking immediately to application defeats its own ends. Ako nešto, neki sustav koji gleda samo odmah na aplikaciju, samo sebi se raspada i potrebi samo sebe. Of course, I've been exaggerating here to make my point. Ja sam naravno ovdje pretjerao da bih vam nešto pokazao. We are rushing headlong towards embracing Western methodologies and everything, as I say, this is a big mistake. Uh, I kao što sam rekao, mi imamo tendenciju da trčimo i da uzimamo sve što je sa zapada i to je velika greška. Not everything about the Western system is bad. Uh, I would suggest, but this is just a thought of my own. The traditional methodology is best in the early and middle stages of education. In the early and middle stages of education. Learn these things. This is how a sentence is structured in your language. This is how the multiplication tables work. Go away and learn them. Because no further mathematics will be of any use to you if you do not have this inside your head automatically. Here is a map of the world with the countries on it. Look where they are in relation to one another. And then maybe we can start to talk about the problems in various countries in different parts of the world. Here is the history of your country and some of the most important facts. And those of surrounding areas. And then perhaps we can start to go a little deeper. Um, and once the child gets maybe to around, I don't know, we are, I'm making this up, 11, 12, 13, the more analytical and critical method can start to come in and become more and more important. Until you get to the university level where much more of it will be critical and analytical. Even there, of course, in disciplines like medicine or physics, and even there, of course, in disciplines like medicine or physics, 
then the traditional method is going to be more useful almost all the way through. And that is why Western countries are finding they have problems with these hard disciplines. Fewer and fewer students in Britain, just for example, but other Western countries the same. U Britaniji uh, osobito ali u drugim zapadnim uh, zemljama no je problem. Fewer and fewer students take public exams in physics or in modern languages every year. Sve manje i manje studenata odlazi na fakultete poput fizike, uh, matematike, uh, medicine. Because these things are either right, either right or they are wrong. Zato što ove stvari ili su ispravne ili pogrešne. Uh, it is not like studying a, a novel where any student can express an opinion. But then it is down to the professor to be cruel enough to say your opinion is worth this girl away. <laughs> For some of these very hard things, the number of students taking the exams is, go is becoming less and less. And Western countries are having to import technicians in these areas because they cannot produce enough. More and more Westerners are going to college but at the end of it, they know less than their grandparents did. Uh, so maybe Western countries need to make a change in this area. When I talked in London and I wanted to annoy my colleagues, which was all the time, of course, I would say in faculty meetings something like this. I have a plan to save the British government billions of pounds every year. Take every five-year-old child who is about to go to school and give him a PhD certificate. After all, the end results, what, they won't be any more ignorant than they are right now. <laughs> and this, my friends, is why I had to immigrate to America. <laughs> but I think the only proper place for someone who thinks like me is around here. <laughs> now, I, I hope what I have said has made you annoyed. <laughs> you will now ask me lots of hostile questions. <laughs> which I will be quite unable to answer. Uh, but if not, I will just assume that you're being very deferential to the professor. <laughs> okay, so, but do we have any questions? The only question is why in Vojvodina they never have questions. <laughs> I resign, I cannot do this well. <laughs>